Hello everyone, we are in Tula, Mexico, which is in the state of Hidalgo. Along and we'll check out this adventure here in Tula, Hidalgo and see the pyramids here. This is the ancient capital of the Toltecs, so come along for the adventure. That guy over there, he's a copy. Tula is a site you probably haven't heard of before, but maybe you've seen these guys. They get replicated a lot when talking about pre-Hispanic culture. They are called the Atlanteans, and they are an important part of understanding pre-Hispanic history. But first, we have to get to Tula. To get to Tula, I took an overnight plane to Mexico City from California. My dad was very generous and met me in the airport. We drove up the highway north to the state of Mexico and eventually ended up in the state of Hidalgo. 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 Toca is an interesting place to visit and it's interesting because it is the energy capital of Mexico. This is where Mexico refines all of its oil into gasoline for the country. Not many know this but Mexico is the third largest exporter of oil in all of the Americas. Soon we got to Hidalgo to Tula, but before we went to the archaeological ruins, my dad said he was hungry, so we went to this restaurant called Restaurante Madero to have some food. My dad had some sopes Hidalgo, which is local food specialty of Hidalgo, and I had a huarache. A huarache is like a really long tostada, um, but it has a lot of other things, as you can see, like avocado, which is my personal favorite. The restaurant was very convenient. As you can see, it was really close to where the archaeological site is and you can also see here that there weren't many people at the archaeological site it's not a very well known area well it's known well but not many people visit it so you'll probably have the place all to yourself if you do go it was 90 pesos which is like about three and a half dollars get into the site and it's like there's maybe a small museum on site. I'm gonna go up these stairs and check it out. Like we have some apartments over here. To understand the story of Tula, I need to mention the ancient site of Teotihuacan. The city of Teotihuacan rose to prominence about 100 AD and fell about 600 AD. The city of Teotihuacan worshipped a new god named Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl was the son of the morning star, the giver of corn, and most importantly, the representation of death and resurrection. The city of Teotihuacan fell. No one knows why, but there's ample evidence showing that the city was deliberately burned, which suggests that there was a great war. After the city fell, the people became divided. There was the Zapotecs, the Chichimeca, the Pura Peche, the Totonacas, and the Toltecs. So we're walking on this road to get to the main pyramid, and there's lots of cactus here. Basically like saguaro, Cholula type cactuses here, which are the native cactuses around here. Those flat ones over there. You can eat, it's called Nepal when they're smaller, and the top is the tuna, which is a fruit. The Toltecs built their capital at Tula. The legacy of the Toltecs has a lot of mythology surrounding it, but there is no doubt that they adored Quetzalcoatl. The main attraction at the site is Pyramid B, also known as the Pyramid of Quetzalcoatl, or of the Morning Star. The mural of the serpent, and over here, you can see some very interesting markings here, very distinct markings. You can see how it would be decorated all in red here. And up there is the snake. And then here you can see skulls. So they would have had skulls, I guess, here. The snake swallowing a skull, a skeleton. You see? The snake is being swallowed as a skeleton. Mm -hmm. Most probably symbolizing that is there the sunset of the sun going to the underworld mm. you see 
So here's the other side. You can see some more detail of the snake eating the skeleton head there. This design down below, you see down in Mitla in Oaxaca, was copied by them. Um, but yeah, you can tell this was would have been the tablero style that the Aztecs like to copy. So they would incorporate this into their buildings. And jaguars, which of course are powerful. And then is this, this is Quetzalcoatl here, right? Yes, With so the feathers. The eagles eating yeah. their hearts. Yeah. They're eating hearts. Yeah. See? But then that's a head. I think that's Quetzalcoatl himself. Emerging from the mouth. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then he has like the jaguar guarding him on the way. This corner right here is a good corner to show you the tableto style of architecture. So you have a sloping edge and then you have a square edge. And then on the square edge is where you'd have the niches. And that's where the decorations would be. And so they would have sloping edge slope. And you can see that repeated here. This right here is like perfect design elements. And then you can tell that we're in one stage because every 52 years they would rebuild this pyramid and it would get bigger and bigger. So we're probably looking at like the third generation when we're in this section right here, inside right here. So very interesting how that works out. At the top of Pyramid B, you will find the massive 4.6 meter stone tall warriors. Each of them weigh over 8 tons. There's many theories of what they represent, but the most prevalent theory is that they were there to support the roof of what was called the Temple of Tlazuicuantapitle, and if you call me out on pronouncing that, so be it, which was also part of the legend of Quetzalcoatl, or what we would call Venus. All of them are original except for that guy over there, he's a copy. The last one. And then what are the square ones? Are those kings over there? Well, they also represent uh, like warriors. Because I can see faces on them. Also at the top, you will find a representation of Tolpilsen Quetzalcoatl. Tolpilsen Quetzalcoatl was a Toltec warrior king and ruled Tula. His legendary fame and worship of Quetzalcoatl actually mixed him up and it was like he became Quetzalcoatl himself. He ruled over the golden age of Tula, and most of the buildings we see today were established in the 10th century when he ruled. It was Tolpilsen Quetzalcoatl who sailed off in the year 947 in a canoe from what they called Tlaban, which some believe might be the lost city of Atlantis. All we know is that it is in the Gulf Coast. The city doesn't exist now, but Tobinson Quetzalcoatl did say that he was going to return one day. Yeah, coming down, it's kind of steep. You gotta walk sideways. One stair at a time. I'm sitting here at the ancient Toltec bus stop. This would have been a bench that they would have stopped for the, to wait for the bus. After they came in over here, they'd come down this these steps and then wait along these benches right here for their Toltec bus to get them back to their hotels. That's, that's how it works. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know this. Time. I came here, I was like eight years old, and the entrance was over here. And this building right here used to be the museum of the site. Around the end of the 12th century, the city of Tula was abandoned. There is no definitive reason why the city was abandoned, but again, the archaeological evidence points to war. The burned palace, with its many white columns, show evidence of deliberate destruction. Probably there was a constant conflict with the other tribes in the area. We're here in the burnt palace area. This would have been a ceremonial cleansing area. So this section of the palace right here would have been known for the warrior's den. They could make like burnt sacrifices here, different idols that would have been on these platforms. 
And then over here, they would sit on these benches and get psyched up for war. If we go over here and look closely, you can see the warriors on there and they're going off to battle to Tlaloc, which is the god, to battle with the Tlaloc, which is the god of rain. And on that tip right there, I don't know if you see it, you can see the tail and it's blue. So that's kind of cool. And then down below you see the warriors walking. So that's really cool. Some more warriors here. Let's see if I can zoom in here and you can see more of those colors. Fascinating. Tula has an association with the Aztecs. When the Aztecs started to rise in fame in the 13th century, they associated their origin story with the Toltecs and declaring the abandoned city a holy site. During the 13th century, Aztecs sort of had like a Toltec mania phase where they wanted all things Toltec. They went to Tula and started to raid the Tula temples and its many artworks, and they eventually incorporated those artworks into Aztec pyramids. This right here would be called the Zompantli, or Skull Rack. And so when the Toltecs captured somebody, they had giant racks of skulls here. And this is something that the Aztecs copied from the Toltecs, was this Zompantli, the Skull Rack. We are here at the ancient ball court. About here in the middle, there would be a hoop on both sides. And the goal is to get the rubber ball within the two hoops. There's a bunch of niches over here. You can see them all around this building. Not much was found here because before anthropologists got here, the Aztecs got here. And the Aztecs were very fond of Toltec art. When the Aztecs fell, the knowledge of Tula fell with them. The city of Tula would not be explored again until the 1940s by modern archaeologists. Today, Tula is a national park and an archaeological site. The pyramids have been restored as much as possible and are available to all to see. There remains many mysteries to be solved in Tula. Mm -hmm. My favorite mystery, yeah. and probably eternal one, is who exactly was Quetzalcoatl? Was he a warrior king who will still come back one day? The feathered snake that represents both death and resurrection still fancies the imagination of all who study the Toltecs. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Toltecs with me, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.